Welcome to the Beyond Physio Podcast, where we help you move, excel, and inspire others on your journey to your next level with knowledge and advice from experts and testimonials from our like-minded community. Rich, welcome to our show. I'm really excited to learn more about Underwater and your journey to get there. And I really want to come away with this for our audience to share with them some helpful tips that they can incorporate into their own training cycles because we have a lot of runners and lifelong athletes on our show. And it seems like from what I've read about products, uh, especially with Underbutter, that you are trying to basically help people feel their very best using natural products, which is awesome. Too many products out there that have too many chemicals in there. Sure. So we can, can we talk about your journey to Underbutter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the journey is actually quite interesting and it, it, and it has two parts. It's my personal journey as an athlete mm. and also the Underbutter product family. So, so starting from the athlete perspective, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer. I mean, I was very athletic, young, but different sports. I was mm. focused on uh, surfing mostly. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I used to surf out Long Island. New Jersey in the middle of the winter with the wetsuits on. Damn. And so I did that all my younger adulthood. The problem there is to stay fit. You got to be in the ocean. Yeah. And you're not in the ocean too often. So by the time I reached my 30s, I was like, I need something more cardio, more everyday, and just besides lifting weights. Yeah. So I got into cycling and I, you know, at first it was just a hobby, but like anything, you get a little bit better. Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll compete. <laughs> all right. Let, let me do a little race, a little backyard race. Yeah. And, and so I started to evolve and, and really I didn't start uh, racing until I was about 35. Oh, wow. so, so I was a master right yeah. from the start. And, um, you know, by the time I reached my early 40s, you know, you start, your body's different, right? Yeah, very. <laughs> you know, so, so you start seeing the wear and tear and, and just, you know, and I started to look for how can I improve my performance, you know. At the same time, my personal background, I'm a chemical engineer, I'm in the biotech industry. Wow. So I kind of always looked at products in general in fitness, mostly topical products, but also supplements. And I always kind of followed what's in there. What are the ingredients? How are they supposed to work? What's the mode of action? So, you know, I'm aging, I'm, I'm needing more products to help improve my my performance and doing more research and i'm starting to learn and see that uh, a lot of off-the-shelf products are, are really just first of all if you look at the industry as a whole yeah. there's a lot of just private label white label products yeah. that, that people just attach a brand to it and and run with it mm -hmm. and so those might not necessarily be purpose Built. You know, I took something that's very simple at first is this chamois cream, which yeah. is like a shim the skin protection yeah. in the And I started looking at the chamois creams on the market. You know, some of the ingredients, you have mineral oil, you have petroleum-based products, you have yeah. a lot of chemicals. And from a, from a, you know, just from a skincare perspective, it's not so great. Yeah, definitely not. But also I kind of questioned why are we going this direction? Really, to me, it seemed like the thrust was, or the focus of the industry was to create a lubricant or an ultra slick barrier, right? Right. Which, you know, in principle makes sense. Right. But, you know, you kind of wonder, is that really what causes skin irritation? Does it need, do you need that type of approach to prevent what's fundamentally going on? Yeah. And it's really about just the wear and tear on, on your skin. Right. The you friction know, over time. The friction over time. I mean, I, I forgot the numbers, but it's like 10 to 20,000 cycles per bike ride. That's how many times you're pedaling yeah. in a typical two hour bike yeah. ride at whatever 90 RPM. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of cycles, a lot right? Of cycles, yeah. So a lot of abrasion. Yeah. So, um, so I thought, well, maybe it's more about conditioning the skin and keeping the skin healthy. I'll set premise. Yeah. So rather than doing that, and yeah. then I started to explore, you know, the story about Underbutter is all about natural products, yeah. but, but it's actually funny because I'm a chemical engineer. Yeah. So the engineer in me said, what is the most ultra slick synthetic material? I started looking when I was developing the formation. Yeah. I was looking at nanoparticles. Oh my gosh. Sort of like ball bearings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was off the I was off the wow. rounds, man. <laughs> I love and, it. <laughs> and so I wasn't necessarily focused on natural ingredients, but somehow, you know, through the research and triangulating and experimenting, I started to triangulate toward just natural butters, mm -hmm. oils, jojoba, shea butter, cocoa butter. Right. All these ingredients are just, first of all, time tested in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. They deeply condition. They have lipids and fats that are similar to your skin, so they really protect and, and, and um, go through the transdermal, yeah. you know. And that was one part of it. Yeah. And the other part, which is, I think, foundational to Underwater, is how we test. Yeah. Uh, again, sort of an engineering background. There is just an array when you look at creams, anything, viscous solutions. There's just a, a huge array yeah. of ASTM um, technical test standards mm -hmm. that exist in yeah. the industry 
for viscosity, friction coefficient, uh, moisture capacity. It's very technical. Really technical stuff. I just said, what if I just take a couple of ASDM tests and test chamois creams to it? And what I found was, you know, they feel immediately in your hand. Oh, yeah. this feels really slick. This is right. Like, hey, the second you elevate the temperature, Second, you add moisture, their performance drops sometimes as much as 50%. So is that why I have to like squirt a whole bunch on my. That's, that's okay. why. That's I, why. All that's right. why people really load it up. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, so I just developed these test methods, and that's like part of our motto is yeah. don't measure it, you can't prove it. So yeah. that's what we did. And what we found was. It's not just having natural greenness. There's a balance. You need certain ones that do create a little bit of a friction barrier yeah. and some that condition trial and error. Yeah. And long story short, we, we got to a chamois cream that, that actually had proven friction reduction. Oh, like, amazing. And then also moisture capacity, which means if you add X amount of moisture, how, how much does the performance degrade? Yeah. And we can improve that. So it doesn't degrade. That's so that was just, you know, once we got to that point, I was just like spiking the ball because I knew we didn't just have a great chamois cream because of the branding or because it's natural ingredients. We knew it was just going to perform very effectively. Period. You start getting into athletes, elite teams. Yeah. We're very fortunate to live where we are. Oh, yeah. In New York, you could just throw a rock and hit a world <laughs> champion or <laughs> something. Right. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I just started getting that feedback. And so that was great. But then COVID hit. Yes. <laughs> so I actually use that as an opportunity to then really think about, you know, we were never going to just be a shame. Yes. I really wanted to develop a whole product line. Yes. That would help athletes. Yeah. You know, in any, any way in terms of their performance. Right, right, right. That's amazing. And so on the under, under website, I've also noticed you have other kinds of things for active recovery mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, can you talk more about those products too? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the same story. So then again, back to my aging. Yes. <laughs> now fast forward. I'm now in my late forties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joining you right there. So yeah. yeah. And, and I'm really starting to compete in like legitimate, like oh, races yes. around the U S oh, because yes. now yeah. I'm traveling on, you know, all the circuits. Right? Wow. Yeah. So I'm really pushing myself. And so I always knew that I wanted to develop something yeah. around, uh, muscle performance. Yeah. And, uh, it was a similar situation there where I started to do research and said, okay, well, what do you have um, in terms of helping to perform while you're actually doing the activity? There's a whole category of, of products, sort of muscle activation. Yeah. And some of them focus on blocking, blocking lactic acid. Yes. Some of them focus on increasing blood flow. There's, there's just all these different yeah. approaches. And so I started to research that. Um, and what I found there was uh, CBD, of course, is another course, one yeah. that's very common. I found that they all do have legitimate mode of actions, mm -hmm. but I think when you talk about homeopathic, and not necessarily homeopathic, but just natural based yeah. products, I think the industry takes something that's that's founded in science and then applies it more broadly in a way that's not going to really help. Yeah. So case in point with like uh, the lactic acid type of blocking formulas, there's a lot of technical papers about ultra endurance runners right. and athletes consuming sodium bicarbonate. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. To, 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 and, and the ratio is something like 0.3 grams per, per kilogram. Yeah. So for me, about 80 kilograms, I got to, and, and they say, if you're really going out, you get double that. Yeah. But then it can cause some GI wreck distress. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it, it comes to like 50, 50 grams, oh, yeah. which is a third of a cup. That's so crazy. if anyone cooks, anyone's watching oh, this, man. you cook, think about, take a third of a cup of sodium bicarbonate oh, baking soda and start scooping Oh it. my gosh. But that is to ingest, yeah. to get into, to literally inside your body, bring down your pH. Yeah. And find the, the actual increase of pH, pH right? Find the acid. So, so that's that's there is science there. But then sure. saying, okay, now let's make a topical solution yeah. and rub it on your legs to do that. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, the absorption is going to be low. Yeah, and it's not going to kick in by the time. Yeah. And actually, one of my competitors, their directions when it says directions of use, how much to use, it says more is more. <laughs> Very specific there. <laughs> Which is basically saying just slap it off just right there. <laughs> so, so that was lactic acid. CBD is another one, right? Yeah. So, um, there's huge science uh, related to CBD around the whole endocannabinoid. Yes. It's an endocannabinoid system. Yep. ECS. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's about my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, 
the, the science of, of the neurological modulation and yeah. controlling stress factors and all these different things. And, and that is great. You know, an athlete needs to de-stress, um, that sleep. I'm sure you can tell anyone. Yes. Absolutely. It's kind of important that people forget about. Absolutely. So from that respect, but from for pure inflammation, the studies for that is like, you need to be taking this for weeks and weeks on end. And it was very marginal results in human. And most of the studies are in animal. Yeah. So long story short, after kind of looking at the whole broad um, areas to the of possible ingredients to use, I actually came back to like really old school, just Arnica. Arnica. Home free is another yeah. one. And I said, why is Arnica so big in Europe? And because I'm I'm over in Europe all the time. Oh, yeah. Like why is it like it's front center in every, you know, yeah. aisle, you know, and why is it not so much here? Mm -hmm. Um and I think it's again part of the sort of the DYI culture, which yeah. is which is a great thing, but people kind of um just sort of make now you can make something very easily yeah but if you're not really thinking about how you're formulating it mm -hmm. uh, you might not get the results yeah that that's intended and also i think there's some confusion again around homeopathic uses of arnica is more i think people have translated what you do uh, or how you should use a supplement or yeah. arnica tea yes which is like a 30x dilution you're mm -hmm. not supposed to be but for topical you get a way higher concentration right because you have more to pass through and to get to the that's tissue effect. Exactly. Yeah. So I realized that a lot of these are creams are, are super highly diluted mm. and, and, and oils as well. Right. That's part one. The other part is I cook a lot. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and you, you might know that, you know, if you start with good ingredients yes. and spend a long time, it really comes out great. Awesome. Yeah. You know, the time culture. So yeah. rather than purchasing, you can buy, you know, in the industry, buy yeah. off the shelf Arnica extract. We there started to direct source Arnica from from growers. Oh my gosh! And um, just wanted to see, you know, if you really start from a source, and then the engineer and me came into a process where I do things with temperature and pressure and. In vacuum to um, super concentrate yeah. in Arnica. So now, you know, you're starting from a pure source. And yeah. that's what we use in our base formulation. Yeah. Uh, same was done with the Comfrey. Yeah. So that's sort of the, the foundation of the product. Right. But then continuing to do the research, there's so many essential oils that do other things like camphor has natural analgesic yes. properties. A lot of wood based, uh, cedar wood, cypress, uh, all these different woods can help with spasms, muscle spasms. Oh, that's nice weird. Wow. Back pain. So, so the one that we have is our recovery product. First of all, people say it smells phenomenal because <laughs> we have all these woods in there. Yeah. There's also, instead of using, uh, everyone knows menthol, right? Yes. The, the menthol, the menthol. We use pure peppermint oil, oh. which actually has the same effect. Yeah. But it's natural. Yeah. So it has this incredible, like, bouquet, yeah. beautiful smell. That's great. But it actually, everything in there does something. That's cool. You know, so, so that's, that's that. And the same story again, it's okay. Let's get into the Me personally, I'm finding it's working really well. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the hands of some athletes. And, and it's the, it was the same story there. That's amazing. So then it sounds like you're on this journey to taking care of yourself as an athlete <laughs> that's led you to this other path of actually creating business out of it and a very successful one as far as getting the name of Butter Butter out there, but also the products that can help better the performance of our athletes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I generally say all the time to my wife, like I stopped working about four years uh, ago because that's when I really said, well, we have a product that actually can help yeah. really change how they, their daily lives, you yeah. know? And so that was the vision and now it's that's, really cool to see it. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Um, what do you think as an athlete, the importance of self-care and recovery protocols are, are pretty important. And in your blog, I think you have a lot of great details about how to do that uh, when you're not training and when you are training. What are some things that have helped you in particular, Rich, uh, as an athlete? Yeah, it, it, it is just that. You know, the whole industry of physical therapy is, is phenomenal. And anyone who has nagging issues that doesn't go to the physical therapist is like, you're just robbing yourself because yeah. you really learn the importance of like preconditioning yeah. before you exercise. I learned all the time that, uh, like I had shoulder surgery two years ago oh, you did. Oh. and it's been really acting up. I was training really hard for a big race yeah. and really acting up. And I said, oh yeah, I'm not doing anything in the past couple months for range of motion. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden I have tendonitis and all these issues. Yeah. Yeah. 
okay, but I learned that from Walt Tormund that I should be doing the right thing. Yes, right. So, so the, the, that has just opened a world to me because um, I really believe you hear about these this concept of marginal gain. Yes. With cycling and yeah. running. If you are thinking about training blocks, I always, I saw a great, I don't know who it was, but I, I just saw a great YouTube video once. It's common sense, like you take a blackboard and you think about training blocks where every week you're boosting up a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more, and then you have your recovery period. If you can just perform like 2% better yeah. and each one of those blocks, because you're recovered within that block, yeah. you know, third Tuesday, super hard training, right? Thursday, I can go to the gym and, and really blast my legs because I'm recovered enough to do that. So I'm always doing a hundred percent in each training and increasing it every week successfully. You do that over three or four blocks throughout all season. Yeah. You're just in a totally different place. Good time. Yeah. So, so recovery has been super important to me now. It's, it's like big time, like protocol and, and you know, there's recovery right after a race, yeah. the, the protocols that you should be doing. Uh, but like I said, just, just, um, I use my own product. Yes. See, that's it. I mean, every night it's by the nightstand. Yeah. This is my recovery rub. And, and that's, that's, um, you know, I know it works. So I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just critical. And then as you age and tendons get tighter, yeah. you know, stiffness, your cartilage gets thinner, you know, all this stuff. You, you need something to help with that. Oh, it's definitely. Like, yeah. yeah. It's funny because, um, as a physio practice, our ideal clients are runners and lifelong athletes, just like yourself. And the, what I found also in my late forties now that, uh, the biggest thing right now for me is that I just want to keep doing this for this my life yeah. and I want to be the best I can in my respective age category, whatever that's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so probably in my forties, more than my thirties and twenties, I paid that much more attention to my macros. Uh, to how intensely I work, how much rest I get, my sleep, all these kinds of things yeah. that have really like helped me to become even better as an athlete and better recovered as an athlete. Uh, I'm looking forward to these products myself, so cool. I'm really excited about that. But the other thing is that um, I find that uh, the athletes that we see who don't take care of themselves are often the ones who are injured the most. Yeah. And uh, when we're talking about these marginal gains, um, I also see that uh, when you don't do the things like you said, mobility, stretching, all these kinds of things that help you to become the best version of yourself, then you're never going to hit, maybe, maybe you won't even be able to realize what that looks like in your 50s and 60s because yeah. you didn't do the, uh, the stuff in your 40s or 30s to make that foundation happen. Yeah. Yeah. So do, what, what is your, are you a runner or what's your... Uh, runner triathlete. Right. Uh, Lifter, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you probably, when you go to an event and you see like the 50 plus categories yeah. and 60 plus that you see, they're doing things. They're yes. doing things before the race. Yeah. You know sure. I mean? yeah. And now that I travel, like I said, I travel a lot yeah. throughout the U S for races. I'm racing with like in my master's category, Yeah, I'm racing with the best of the best amazing, and right? I see what they do. Yeah. You know, they have protocol, lifelong yeah. protocol. And, and that's how they perform so well. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, it's an investment you have to make and, oh, yeah. you know, you cut corners, you're going to have results that are not as, as, as optimal as you could potentially have. Definitely. Yeah. And I think as a physio, I think what we love to do at next level is, um, and I actually was speaking with the CEO and founder of, of age grouper. And one of the things that Matt and I talked about was how, you know, when, when your physio is involved into your training plan and when your physio really gets to see what your, what your training block looks like and what you're doing and knowing what imbalances you might have so that they can sort of cater different kinds of exercises or different kinds of things to do so that you can have a successful training block and a successful race season. Uh, that really does play a factor into how well you can perform that season as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I actually had the pleasure of uh, sitting in one of your workshops oh, earlier nice. this year. Yeah. And um, physios are talking about some ones that are working with the elite, uh, the elite athletes, yes. yeah. um, triathletes. And I think you need that external reference as well, because we will do what we think we can do. Right. Right. And, but when you have that outside influence to say, Hey, if you're really going to push yourself like that, this is what we should do with your schedule on the next couple of days. But yes. Having someone involved at that level is, is super important. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a rotator cuff shoulder surgery. You said any other injuries you've had that you've had physical therapy for? Uh, no, that was the main one. That yeah. was, that was, uh, three, two years, three years ago, yeah. Somerville racing. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, I broke the shoulder. Oh, I do what? I broke my tailbone in another race, but oh, I, break, I break my tailbone like once a year. Are you serious? <laughs> Just why do you suffer? No, I one time surfing. There's oh, been three okay. very random things. Yeah. And, and so the tailbone is just like, oh, just, yeah. but uh, the shoulder was my first real uh, serious injury that set me back. And again, to your audience, um, get you know, don't just get x-rays. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, that's not so bad. And they yeah. said, well, how old are you from late forties? Yeah. You're not going to be a, you're not going to the Olympics. Then right. you probably don't need surgery. So I wasted six months. Oh, right. So yeah. I did PT. Yeah. I did everything and you know, almost healed for six months. And then I, the next season time to spring. Yeah. Whoa. I got no sprint. Oh man. And so I, then I got the surgery. Yeah. And, uh, so that was a bit of time. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So then, um, your master's in cycling. Yeah. Have you done any other kinds of things like triathlon or running? Or oh, running? man. I know. I'm really worried <laughs> because now we're, we, we're so ingrained in the Ironman community. Oh, right? yes. In triathlon. Yeah. yeah. So we go to so many Ironman events. So yeah. Going to Chattanooga in a couple of weeks. Nice. Yeah. And, like Placid and all over the place. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I just, the, you guys are like the worst because you're like, well, you can just do a spring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. Because I, I surfing, I think I can do pretty well on the swim part. I'm, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. Horrible run. I, you look like a like a no. Like, I'm like a, no, I'm like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I yeah, I know, and it's just like the time investment. I it does. It's massive. Massive. But it's faster for cycling though too, isn't it? Or well, so that's why I do more criterium racing oh, now, because it's oh, just man. short and tense. Yeah, that's the only way. I love road racing. Yeah, yeah. and that's I'm not the most powerful sprinter at all. Mm. But in a road race, you know, I really can work the attrition. I'm really good at handling. Oh, wow. Uh, so I wish I could do more road racing. Yeah. I just don't have the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you got into crit, like, what was that like? Because I know it's, is it a, it's a different kind of bike altogether, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just everything, how you train. Yeah. Uh, it's just that close proximity that you yeah. to kind of being really up close. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets scary out there, man. Yeah. But it is just such a blast. Yeah. It's oh, wow. just, uh, a wow. total rush. How many times do you have to go around? Is it, I guess it depends on the race. Yeah. It depends on the race and the yeah. circuit. And, uh, yeah. So Athens, I don't even know how many times we're going to do probably 30 plus. Oh my gosh. More than that. But the, the Masters race, I think is 40 or 50 minutes there. So really? that's next week. Oh, wow. In Athens, Georgia. It's a big race I'm training for, mm -hmm. but. You know, they all are, um, but the elites, the pros are going for an hour and a half. Oh, wow. You know, like 30 yeah. miles an hour. So it's just crazy what I they do. Imagine. So, so that's the other thing. Like, you know, the, the teams that we sponsor, yeah. they, they're they young. Yeah. They're all young, obviously. Yes. I don't know. There's a couple of people older than 30, yeah. but even at that age, they, they already see the advantage of using products. like this. like people just assume awesome. when you're young, you just do anything. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Fairly good diet. Yeah. Keep training and you're good to go. Yeah. But but they really do see um the advantage of, of the products. Um, it's amazing. Right? Super cool. And obviously they're legit because they're all natural products. You don't have to worry about getting the testing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And these are people that really know their body. Yeah. They really know if I do this on a Tuesday, how am I gonna feel Wednesday morning? Mm. Thursday, this is how I should feel. They really are in tune and they start using the products for a couple yeah. of weeks and they're like, no, this is absolutely changing. Yeah. Like I can go one more week before the recovery week. Yeah. It just gives them more flexibility in their training program. Wow. What are the products that are sort of on the horizon for underbutter in the future? Uh, there's kind of two directions. Mm -hmm. One is general usability. Yeah. So oil salads are great. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people are in a parking lot before a race. It's so, true. So we're working on a stick for Format. Oh, yeah, more just kind of quick, yeah, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. Um, and then the longer term is actually SPF protection. Oh, yeah, because it, you know, it, it, it's super important, yeah. Uh, but it's so funny, like, like everything about under butter. When I started to research, yeah, um, the prop, the, the testing and how these products are developed. It, it's just ridiculous. The SPF is, is actually highly regulated. Mm -hmm. So, so topicals are, there's almost no regulation. I mean, we do testing yeah. for shelf life and for uh, biocompatibility, yeah. all that stuff, but you really don't have to. Mm -hmm. it, it's, but with SPF, there yeah. are, there are industry standards, but, but those industry standards are not really aligned with how athletes perform because 
they for example, the SPF testing is just normal um, water. Uh -huh. So when you say it's uh, you know, SPF, whatever, yeah. for 30 minutes, they're just using water as, as the base um, oh, solution. Really interesting. Huh. When you're working out, when you're surfing, you're in salt water. When Absolutely. you're working out, you're sweating yeah. in salt water. Uh, it's, there's, there's more abrasion, there's yeah. just more things happening. Um, so, I, so to me, SPF needs to have that standard yeah the protection standard but also has to have some additional tests around the use the yeah. use so so that's what we're doing so we're focusing on that but also kind of purposely waiting a little bit on the spf because the mineral products yeah are really taking off yeah but there's better formulations coming and when you develop an spf usually you're you're qualifying for like it's very expensive oh sorry. oh yeah it's over a hundred thousand dollars because it's federally per yeah per spf and format no. so so if you have a spray yeah. and a rub that's two tests two really tests. yeah oh yeah. my god so, so it's super expensive so that's yeah. why that's why not everybody has an FP, spf yeah coming so we're waiting for sort of these next generation of mineral products that, yeah. that are coming out so that's, that's a beast and so then yeah. we lock in our our formulation yeah, it's really got longevity. Oh, that's amazing, man. So then it sounds like, I, I mean, my, my concern with just general sunblock and, and, and whatnot products is that there's so much other stuff in there. And from what I've read in different papers, it's sometimes the substances in there are more toxic than the sun itself. Yeah. Uh, buyer beware, yeah. even when you see mineral products, it, it's a shame that this is a case, but if you use a mineral product and you kind of have like what's called the white cast, and yes. little, that's actually a good thing. Oh, it is. Because it kind of means yeah. that there's a good chance it's truly a mineral formulation. Yeah. If it says mineral and you put it on, it's like clear. You know, beautiful glowing skin, <laughs> it's clear. There's that all good. the octobenzoid, all oh, of that oh. stuff is still in there. And I won't name a company, but there's a huge company that's really big that has a whole product line of mineral. And then if you read the ingredients, there's all the legacy uh, SPF blockers. Yeah. So you really need a mineral product that um, is working on uh, opacity, basically yeah. blocking the UVA. I see. UV. I think it's at Alba or something like that. I remember using one of my kids where it's like thick paste, basically. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are definitely ones that are getting much better that yeah. are truly pure mineral based, yeah. but um, it, it's more about just that balance of coating the skin well. Yeah. Um, not being cakey, but also truly relying on the mineral for aspect for the sun protection. That's cool. So um, as far as Underbutter goes, company, do you have like an R&D lab with them? Yeah, yeah. We've got a really small lab in, in, in Montclair. Nice. Um, oh, right, in Montclair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So once I get, but I do all the formulation myself initially. Yeah. And um, once I get that to where I feel like, okay, this has got legs, yeah. then I work with partners to, um, to develop it and scale it up. I see. And, and then industrialize it. That's amazing. When you talk about formulation, are you actually like mixing things together to see what the outcome looks like or? Yeah, and sometimes it's the entire formulation of yeah. all the ingredients. Wow. Sometimes you're looking at individual ingredients. So, so for example, the chamois cream, I was specifically looking at friction coefficients. How yeah. much does it reduce friction? How much does this oil do that? How yeah. much does this butter do that? Wow. So, the, and then you bring it all together into the final formulation mm -hmm. uh, and see if it has the same performance. That's awesome. Um, as far as like under butter goes, um, are you guys also looking into doing more like supplements or any kinds of like bars, anything like that? Was there just simply thick? There's thick a couple. Yeah, yeah not, not nothing oral, only topical products mm -hmm. right now. There's still, there's other things around um, post activity, just yeah. skin, skin repair oh, nice. type products. Yeah. Um, but really, there's just so much we can do already with the muscle. You know, with the muscle rubs we are doing well with triathletes yes. and and cyclists yeah. and runners but you know i go to the gym and i'll give our activating one the yeah. pre-workout one to you know someone looks like a real weightlifter yeah, yeah. and they come back to me the next day they're like oh my god man I, I i did like two extra sets and this many reps and it just works we have kickboxers now and wow. muay thai you know, fighters so we have like 
a whole world of industries yeah. that we have to tap into. I, you know, Rich, I'm thinking even just for our rehab clients who are going through injury and then yeah. trying to recover, this might be something that they could really benefit from too. And it's all natural. Yeah, it's all natural. You know, it's stuff that most, I don't want to generalize, but a lot of older people have injury yeah. and they might be familiar with Arnica. They've heard of it before. Yeah. So, but it's just more effective. It's higher concentration. That's really cool. And so Matt, so tell, tell us about like your own like training stuff. Like, do you count calories? Do you, what, what do you take in and how does, what's a typical, typical training look for, for Rich? Oh man, this year is going to, is pretty intense because I'm training for a national masters. Yes. I just turned 50 last summer. Did you? Oh, yeah. right behind you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing a 50 plus this year. Nice. Uh, so that's the big thing in July. That's yeah. I think it even might be on birthday. So right. It might be 51. <laughs> <laughs> like so, uh, that's, that's the big one, but right. there's a couple like happens next week up in yeah. Georgia. I'll just be doing a criteria about the road. Yes. Trip. And then we have have a whole series Memorial Day weekend yeah. uh, oh, wow. in New Jersey. Yeah. So we got the East and Twilight show with our buddies there, nice. Somerville, um, Plainfield. So that's another one. So there's a couple that, that'll get me to that National yeah. Masters, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So uh, what does training look like? Yeah. It's pretty standard. Um, I am experimenting more. What's changed a little bit is um, experimenting more with a true taper. Like my definition of taper was not a real taper. <laughs> so now the race at least yeah. today, this today is se it's, it's seven days away from Saturday. Yeah. So today will be my last really full hard yeah. effort. And this week is sort of an overload week. Yeah. Um, and then next week will be truly a taper all the way through. Wow to that race mm -hmm. um so incorporating more of that yeah and i'm learning that from friends that are more um ultra endurance yeah. and um also that are doing like a, a friend uh, nelson who's doing unbound mm -hmm. uh gravel he's doing a 350 mile oh my gosh and um he he's just really like matter of fact he said rich like you have what you have mm -hmm. you know if you taper and you taper properly you're just going to be fresh and he's in, he's kind of my age too yes you get your back hurts, your knees hurt. You just need like 10 days for unbound. Yes. Yeah. Do it 10 days. Yeah. You need just 10 days for all of that to just heal. Yeah. <laughs> so you just feel fresh and, yeah. and that's a mental thing too. Yeah. I mean, there's the muscle performance, but there's just the mental for sure. uh, benefit of feeling fresh at the race. Yeah. Are you on trainer most of the day or are you using your training? Yeah. I usually use a, a trainer. I'm yeah. usually doing Swift. I find yeah. that the, just the protocols that I'm doing, the training, the intervals, you just can't do that. I'm not <laughs> in <laughs> New Jersey anyway. I love that I was in uh, Miami this winter. We yeah. stayed there for three months. Months. And uh, I was right at the Rickenbacker Bridge yeah. to keep saying and so that's straight with like just one or two traveling like yeah so it's so nice to actually train outside and we'll do intervals yeah and like and not do an obstruct definitely yeah so that was cool but yeah mostly indoor um yeah. you asked about counting calories um i don't be really, careful macros and stuff like that too i need to, i'm gonna i would love for you to recommend dietitian oh i, I need love to, to yeah yeah i, I need to that's it. the next that's the last missing piece yeah I always ate healthy yeah really always eat healthy um but i know that you know there's balance right yeah that was super important absolutely uh, actually julie belay who was our sort of like um nutrition partner mm -hmm. she's also like a ridiculous mountain biker so cool. I, I think she'll be able to uh, guide you very perfectly that's great I'm yeah I'm there. so i think that's one last piece of the puzzle yeah uh, one thing i really believe in is carefully like we always have to lose hope Yes. yes, but this year I, I I had a six month weight loss program. Oh, so I really it, yeah. I know that you people laugh at me. I know, <laughs> but my, my race weight is one seventy five. Wow, I uh, hate that. Yeah, I'm like one seventy seven right now. Yeah, and uh, no wonder I was one eighty five ish. So so I said I'm doing a slow. Yeah. I'm gonna carefully lose weight. I'm yeah. still gonna eat whatever the hell I want. Yeah. smaller portions. You know, a lot more vegetables. Yeah. And, and I got to where I want to be. And so next week at the race, it's just like one last thing removed. Like yes. I know my weight's right. Yeah. You know, I know I'm tapered and recovered. So yeah. that's what, so again, it's, it's not just one thing. It's, it's a multiple. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you also like have like a second coach then, Rich, or do you I have don't. a help? So I, you know, know. This guy pretty far. Well, you know? I indirectly do because I work with so many teams mm -hmm. and I'm just always asking what they're doing and I'm seeing their training yeah. programs. So I indirectly, but again, it's like 
like I know if I had a coach that was truly looking at everything, yeah, uh, over <laughs> my shoulder, I would probably be a little bit better. <laughs> but pretty well, that one. I think at this point, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm 50. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you want to go at this? Like you're also kind of let's go on as long as you can. Oh yeah, I yeah. have to. Do that. Yeah. I mean, I see guys that are racing in their 60s, and and you, you don't you think they're 50 years old? Oh, so and I know you see this in running. Yeah, 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 definitely. You're like, wow, what? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Uh, it's just, um, yeah, we're an aging population now, and, yeah. and there's a lot of factors to that. If you if you stay on top of this, and it's just an integral part of your life, and it's it's gonna help. Oh yeah, definitely. Rich, thank you so much for coming on the show and getting to meet you in person yeah oh, it's been awesome yes. and if there's anything that we can do to promote uh, underbutter I, I think it's solid product from what i read about it and beating you i think it's even more legit especially with a chemical engineer behind it that, that <laughs> gives it more legitimacy yeah. so anything we can do that to, pro to push this let us know yeah the podcast is great i'll make sure to push it out yeah and, uh, i can too yeah yeah awesome, awesome. cool Thank thanks you so much yeah Thanks so much for tuning into today's episode. It really does mean a lot to us. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or comment if you got at least one or two helpful insights or takeaways to help you get to your next level.